welcome. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Pam. It's Easter. It's finally here. It's finally here. We are so glad that you are joining us. Why don't you say hey to us in the chat, especially if you're new, you can say hey and then say, hey, I'm new. Mm -hmm. And we would love to connect with you. And you can do that by texting connections to 97,000, or there's actually a link that you can click on. Yep. In the chat. Yeah. And connect. Yeah. I love this time of year. Like spring is finally here. Mm -hmm. My birthday's in spring. Like just the weather and the colors. And and obviously with this time of year comes um, wonderful Easter candy like peeps. Do you like, do you no, like peeps? No, I don't. No? I don't, I, <laughs> listen, I don't understand. I meet people and they either love peeps or they hate peeps. What, peeps are good though. If you roast them over the open fire and then make them into a s'more. You've done that? Yes. I've never done That's that. That's really good. That's and nice. they have different color peeps now. Different what? Dr. Pepper peeps. Oh, no. Pancake and syrup Listen, peeps. Listen, <laughs> we got to settle this once and for all. Do you like peeps? Post in the chat. We would love to know. And as you post in the chat, check out this video. Hey, thanks for helping me get this ready. My kids love Easter. <laughs> Who doesn't love Easter, am I right? Yeah, that's true. But if you think about it, leading up to that first Easter, Jesus had it pretty rough. Wow, I never really thought of that. <laughs> I wonder what ever happened to that guy. Well, you know, he, he died on the cross. Yeah. You sure about that? Yeah. No, no, that's a different guy. I'm thinking of the Jesus that, uh, what's his last name? No, 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 no. It's the same guy. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. I just never connected the two together before. Jesus on a cross. I wonder whatever happened to that guy. Um, he, uh, he came back to life. Three days later. What? Yeah. Wait, we're still talking about tomb Jesus. Yeah. That's the same guy? Yeah, yeah, he died on the cross for our sins. No, no, that's a different Jesus. No, 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 same one. Died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, came back to life, and now he sits at the right hand of God. Wait, cross Jesus is the same as right hand of God Jesus? Yeah. Not separate Jesuses? There's no separate Jesuses. I just never put them all together before. No, it's still, it's still one guy. Wait, you understand what this means, don't you? One guy did all of that? I mean, that changes history, that changes everything. That is big. He deserves more than just jelly beans for his birthday. Wait. So the Easter Bunny is the no. I love that video. Like Jesus changed everything and he changes everything. But we're not here to celebrate peeps, right? Thank what you, are Jesus. we what are we here to do? <laughs> we're gonna celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and the freedom that we have in him. Yes. Let's go celebrate. Let's worship. This is a room of resurrection. This is a dead man's holiday. Have you ever seen dry bones dancing? Come see me stomping over my grave. This is a room of testimony.
to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. You know, the people up here on stage, they're not performing. They've had their lives changed by Jesus. And when you have your life changed by Jesus, you can't help but sing and praise him. If he is dead and alive again and has offered you new life, if you've had that experience now, and I know what happens is sometimes we get around this and we do this all the time and we forget the significance that if Jesus died and didn't rise again, we're all in trouble. But because he rose again, there's new life available to everyone. And that's the point of this moment. And so maybe you haven't experienced that yet. I hope today you do. But if you've experienced the transformation of Jesus Christ, then we have every reason to praise him today. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ that I was dead, but I'm alive again, and I will live forever, not because of anything good I've done, but because of the good you've done, that you died and rose again for me and for everyone here 
and we love you and now want to praise you. You are alive, you are our coming king. We rejoice over you and your resurrection right here, right now, in Jesus' name, amen.
for our sin. And we thank you, God, that you rose again. You resurrected. God, thank you for the hope of resurrection. We are not without hope this morning because you are here with us. So God, may we draw close to you as you draw close to us. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts today. We want to lean in. We pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. You guys can have a seat. We're glad you're joining us today here on campus or online. I have to be honest with you and confess, I'm really getting tired of holidays. Like, there's just too many, right? Aren't you overwhelmed with the amount of holidays? I mean, there's some good moments, like where we get the day off for Thanksgiving or Christmas or Martin Luther King Day or Independence Day. That's kind of cool to get the day off. But then there's like these secondary holidays, like Halloween, I got to buy candy and give it out to Rugrats. Cinco de Mayo, I got to get the guacamole rolling. And then you have these holidays. Every day of the week and year, you need to have a holiday. So January 21st, put in your calendar, it's Squirrel Appreciation Day. Just in case you needed to appreciate the squirrels around you. Or March 20th, interesting, Extraterrestrial Abductions Day, which I'm not sure how we celebrate because you're not here, you're somewhere else. Um, November 15th is problematic because some of you need this. Clean your refrigerator day. If someone has to remind you to clean a refrigerator, you need more than a holiday. You need something else, like clean your refrigerator. But most importantly, I think you should remember Festivus on the 23rd because part of Festivus, now this is worth celebrating, part of Festivus is airing your grievances against the people you love. I think it could help you in your Christmas celebration. Like if you could just get on the 23rd, get that junk out, you might enjoy your Christmas just a little bit more. So I'd encourage you to put Festivus in your calendar. But all these holidays, right? It's getting to a point where if every day is a holiday, there's no holidays. Like all these holidays, we got to prepare, we got to eat food, we got to do this, we got to do that. We're celebrating every day, blah, 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 holiday, 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 which gets us to this point of asking the question today, why Easter? 
Like, it's just a day to celebrate the fact that a rabbit poops out eggs that are candy and you hide them in the yard and find them and, really? That's sort of fun. It's interesting. Or, okay, it's more religious than that, right? Jesus died and rose again, so I'm going to buy a ham and I'm going to go to church and we'll call it a day, right? Like, that's Easter, right? It's like, this is just the next thing we do. We just do a holiday. We just do a holiday. We just do a holiday. And that's all it is. So like, let's slow down today and ask the question, why Easter? And there's a verse in the Bible that helps me. There's a lot of verses in the Bible that help me. But today, one I wanna just zoom in on with you is in Mark chapter 10, verse 45. You certainly can follow along in your Bible. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. We love opening our Bibles here, electronic or paper copy. And we're just gonna look at this one verse today, which explains to us why Easter. For even the Son of Man, Jesus is speaking, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus is describing himself, he's talking about himself, and he's saying, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is defining for us, telling us why Easter in this short amount of verses, but there's a lot here and we need God's help. So would you pray with me and ask him to help us? God, today as we gather to celebrate Easter, many of us here for all different reasons, for tradition, just kind of what we do, we just do holidays because that's how we're conditioned in our modern society, another holiday. But today I pray that you would guide us, teach us, lead us, help us to understand what your Bible teaches us about Easter, that it might change us and transform us and help us all year round. I ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. So Jesus, again, is the one speaking and saying this about himself. This phrase, son of man, it's the most used description that Jesus uses to describe himself. He calls himself always in the Gospels, I am the son of man. It's actually a pretty strong theological topic that I don't have time to get into with you today, but it's just trying to remind us that he is a man. He has come for a very specific divine purpose, but Jesus is a man who came as a Jewish carpenter and walked on planet earth. He's the historic Jesus of Nazareth. He's a person, but he's also the son of God. He is the son of man. He's a person and he is God, which is mind-blowing. If it doesn't wreck your mind that Jesus is fully God and fully man, you're probably not awake. It's hard to get our minds around, but, but I would submit to you, if you struggle thinking that Jesus is fully God, join the club, we all do, but I would submit if Jesus is God and God can do whatever he wants, is it possible that God decides what I want to do is show up as a man and walk on planet Earth as a man, like nothing is impossible for him. So if it's, he's God, he has the ability to put on skin and show up on planet earth to put on display his love and grace to the people around him. And again, that stretching of your mind, I get it, stick with me. Jesus says, I am the son of man and the son of God. And he tells us why he came. He didn't come to be served, but to serve. This is interesting because you would think if he's God, shouldn't we bow down and serve God? Like if he is infinite and almighty God, shouldn't we serve him? And it's interesting that Jesus sort of turns this and says, no, I have come to serve you. He turns on its head our notions of what service is like. And he's like, no, I've come to planet earth to serve you. What's fascinating about the context in which Jesus says this, he's saying this line in the middle of a conversation with his disciples, and his disciples are arguing about who's the greatest. His disciples are in this bickering match of who's the best. And in the middle of this argument, Jesus makes this statement. And it's interesting because all of humanity is always arguing about who's the best. All of us do the same thing. My dad's bigger than yours. My politician is smarter than your politician. 
I'm richer, I'm stronger, I'm smarter. My argument, my logic, my beliefs, my religion, I'm bigger than you, better than you. It is natural as humans to want to overpower other people. This is a normal part of things, and this is happening in Jesus' time, and he says this statement in Mark chapter 10 because of the natural human tendency. So you ask the question, why Easter? Powerless people like you and me fight for power, and this has been happening for the entire human race, that we think we're in control, we think we're strong, we think we're better, we're vying for strength, we're vying for popularity, we're vying for wealth, we're trying to be powerful, and the more we try to be powerful, the more we try to be great, the more exhausted we become, and the king of the universe, the God of heaven, sees us actually in our powerlessness and says, I'm going to come to planet earth and save and serve you, the most powerful is going to become powerless in order to serve us. And this is why we have Easter. So you go back to Mark chapter 10. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. The most powerful being in the universe comes down to serve us. We think we've got it all together. And he's like, no, I've got it all together and I'm coming to serve you and to give his life as a ransom for many. When you hear the word ransom, what do you think of? Like a kidnapping, right? So someone kidnaps someone, and they call up and say, hey, if you don't give us a certain amount of money or do whatever, I'm gonna hurt someone, right? And it's like kidnapping happens all the time. It, it hasn't happened to me, but it's a common in our world. And, and Jesus, though, is making this statement, and it's interesting because I've never been kidnapped Nobody's ever had to ransom me from anything, and yet Jesus in this statement is actually talking about you and me. He's actually saying to you and me, no, no, Joe, you have been kidnapped, and I've come to pay your ransom. Like, what do you mean I've been kidnapped? He's like, Jesus, Joe, you've been imprisoned by something. What have I been imprisoned by, Jesus? Let me explain. You know how, like, you want to start looking for a new job, but you never do? You know how you want to go back to school, but you never do? Do you know how you want to be a good husband or a good person, but you never start doing certain things? There's things you want to start, but you never get to it. You know that prison? You know the prison of you want to stop cussing, but you never do? You want to stop drinking, but you never do? You want to stop looking at porn? but you never do. You want to stop being such a jack wagon at home, but you never do. You, you want to do something. You want to stop something, but you don't. You want to start something, but you don't. That powerlessness that you and I have where we think we're so much control, but we can't even make a decision to go back to school. We can't even stop a habit. I want to stop biting my nails. I can't. I think I'm powerful. Think I'm in control, and all of us. So Paul says this in Romans. He says, all of us want to do good. I think this is natural. We want to start certain things that are good, and we want to stop things that are bad. All of us do it, but evil's right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in doing God's law. I think most of you, most of us are listening to this. We want to honor God, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind, waging war and making me a prisoner the language Paul is saying, he's like, you guys want to start certain things, but you can't. You want to stop certain things, but you can't. You think you're big and strong and you have everything under control, but you're actually powerless over your own life. And Jesus sees this powerlessness in all of us. So why Easter? Powerless people like you and me are enslaved to sin and death. This is all of our condition. We all struggle with this. This is who we are as a humanity. We want to do certain things and we don't do them. We want to stop certain things and we keep doing them. We want to honor God, but we get it messed it up over and over. And we're trying to make ourselves better by being powerful, more powerful than anybody else, and having control over every situation when we're completely out of control. And God's like, I see you. Why Easter? I see you. You think you're powerful. You think you got it together, but you're not. You're actually enslaved. And the more you try to get yourself unstuck, the more deep you get yourself into problems. And so the Bible says that Jesus comes as a ransom. And when the Bible uses the word ransom, it's Jesus paying a price to buy us back from sin. That he sees us in this condition. 
The most powerful God recognizes this in you and me, and he loves us so much that he comes to planet Earth to serve us. And he'll go all the way to the cross. And so when you look at the horror of the cross, the torture of the cross, the pain of the cross, that's Jesus paying the price to ransom the entire human race from the beginning of time to the end of time, paying that incredible price to buy us back out of the prison of sin and death that holds us where we think we're in control, but can any of us stop death? We wanna start things and we can't. We wanna stop things and we can't, and God looks at us and goes, you need a ransom, and I'm gonna send my son Jesus to pay this incredible price to buy you back. Why Easter? Jesus comes to serve and ransom the powerless, like you and me, to pay with his life the cost to buy us back and grant us new life. Romans chapter five says, you see, just at the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died. But God demonstrates his own love for us while we were still sinners, Christ died. So he looks at us and he sees the condition we're in and he goes, I, I see you trying to be powerful, but you don't even have control over your own life. I see you trying to be greater and better than everybody else, but you're digging yourself a bigger hole. I see you in that condition. I love you so much that while you're powerless, I'm coming for you. I'm gonna serve you. I'm gonna lay my life down for you. And he gives this invitation, come to me. All you are weary and heavy burden and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. So think of this exchange that's taking place. I want to start doing certain things, but I can't. I keep failing. I want to stop certain things. I can't. I keep failing. I want to be strong and powerful and make you all think I've got it all together, but I really don't. And this is the mess of my life and your life. And we all have this train wreck going on inside us. And Jesus is like, I died to ransom you from your sin. And if you would just bring that to me and give that to me, I'll take it from you. And here's what I love about Jesus. You know, if you hand him your sin and your shame, he doesn't make you feel stupid. He doesn't say, well, you know what? You gotta clean that mess up before you come to me. You know, Joe, you said you would stop that a hundred times and you keep failing. So when you get it right, then come to me. When you put yourself together, when you clean up your act, when you stop cussing, when you just get it together, get it together, Joe. When you get it together, then come to me. He says, no, bring me your mess. Bring it all to me, and guess what I'm gonna give you? I'm going to give you rest, the rest you desperately want, the rest you desperately need. I'm gonna give it to you as a gift if you would just receive it. Why, Easter? We celebrate the rest that comes from ransom. It comes at an incredibly high price, the death of the Son of God who looks at the human race and looks at me and looks at you and says, Joe, you're trying to be strong and you think you got it all together, but you can't even stop eating ruffles. <laughs> as soon as you get stressed out, you do it time and time and time again. You seek comfort in food. You do it over and over and you, you say you're gonna stop and you don't. And he says, come to me with that. Just come to me and I'll, and I'll give you rest. You don't have to get it right. I'll, I'll give you rest. I'll help you. And for that to happen, it required him to die. This cruel death and absorb in his body the punishment of sin for the entire human race was upon him. And by his wounds, not mine or yours, we're healed. And this is the, the rest that comes because of an incredible ransom that was paid by Jesus. I was enslaved to sin, and so are you. But Jesus ransomed us back from that. Do you know the character, historic character, Harriet Tubman? It's an interesting story. If you don't know her story, I'd encourage you. There's a 2019 new film, relatively new film, out about her. I'd encourage you to watch it. Fantastic. But here's a woman that's born into slavery and experiences incredible tragedy, unlike any of us would probably likely experience. She's taken away from her family. At 13, she suffers an incredible head injury at the hands of her slave master that will impair her the rest of her life. But she is hell-bent on getting free. 
So she lives in Maryland and she puts together a plan to find her way to Philadelphia and at great risk escapes slavery in Maryland and makes her way to Philadelphia. And what's incredible is the journey and the risk that she took. But once she gets to Philadelphia, you know what she does? She kicks up her heels and just has a great day. And she's like, I'm so thankful that I'm not a slave anymore. And all those other people, they're stuck. But I had the courage and I figured out a way. Like, no, you gotta watch the story. That's not what she does at all. As soon as she gets to Philadelphia, she thinks of all the people that are still enslaved in Maryland that she knows. And she makes her way at great cost and risk and goes back to Maryland to rescue people. And from 1850 to 1860, she makes 11 trips back and forth in the Underground Railroad. And doesn't just take people from Maryland to Philadelphia. She makes their way all the way to Canada so that they could be free immediately at great, incredible risk and cost. And she says this as she reflects about her life. Twant me, twas the Lord. I always told him I trust to you. I don't know where to go or what to do, but I expect you to lead me. And he always did. She, she takes the freedom that she has and she holds it up to God and says, God, guide me because I'm now sent back into slavery to rescue people at great cost. What's interesting about, about gathering at Easter, Christians around the globe today, among us, Many of us, maybe most of us, would go, I am powerless over my own life decisions. I'd love to quit something. I'd love to stop something, but I can't stop it. I'd love to start something, but I can't start something. I am powerless over my life, but Jesus has come and rescued me and changed me from the inside out. And now how many Christians in America are just enjoying Philadelphia when Maryland, there are people that are enslaved? They're just enjoying the rest Churches around the globe today enjoying the rest that we have come from Christ. The powerlessness of me has been rescued by the powerful one. And now I'm just kicking my heels up, enjoying the rest. Instead of going, why Easter? Those who have experienced Christ's rest spend the rest of their lives rescuing others. This is Easter. That if I have been powerless and the powerful one rescued and ransomed me at great cost, now I am left here on planet earth to rescue other people. As I experience the rest of Christ, it fuels me to go and serve other people. I'll make a bold statement. I think just one guy's opinion. I think our problem in 2024 is not political I don't think it's sexual, I don't think it's cultural, I don't think it's economics, I don't think it's environmental. I think it's a population of Christians who gather on Easter all across the country who think that the rest they've experienced isn't to go and rescue others, but instead we enjoy the rest and we sit in the rest and we become so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. So rather than getting in arguments about politics with people who are from different political persuasions, maybe instead as followers of Jesus, we should try to understand why people are acting the way they're acting and thinking the way they're thinking and ask questions and stop making judgments. Instead of being a part of the problem, Maybe we should be a part of the solution that when someone is behaving a fool and acting a fool, instead of seeing them as a fool, looking in the mirror and seeing what a fool I am. Instead of being grossed out by the sin of others, maybe I should look in the mirror and see the snapshots of my foul heart that Jesus would listen and love and serve me. That rather than arguing and condemning, that I'm supposed to be loving and gentle the powerful Christ rescued me from the dominion of darkness and brought me into the kingdom of love. And now in Philadelphia, I'm supposed to leave and go to Maryland and rescue anyone I can at great personal cost so that whatever money I have, it's no longer mine. It's to be used to help other people. Whatever life and breath and freedom that I've experienced, it's to serve other people. 
But as Americans, we've just gotten so comfortable in a country club Christianity where the rest we've experienced become so heavenly minded that it's no earthly good and we're a part of the problem, not part of the solution. And Jesus is like, I have set you free for you to go ransom other people by laying your life down at great cost to love and serve others. And it's so much bigger than anything political. It's eternal that God sees you and me and loves us so very much. So you wanna know how to have a happy Easter? You know the happiest Easter is the one person, the two people, the thousands of people that raise their hand and go, man, I'm powerless over chips, right? I'm powerless over a career move. There's things I wanna do, but I can't do. There's things I wish I'd stop doing, but I can't stop. I'm powerless, but I, I need the powerful one, Jesus, to give me rest and so the happy Easter is the one who says, God, help me come into my life and change me from the inside out. And you don't have to clean yourself up for that. You come to him and you give him your mess and he replaces it with rest and freedom and peace and forgiveness and new life. And the person that experiences a happy Easter is the one that then takes what you've experienced from Christ and you give it to other people. And when they ask you, why are you behaving the way you do? You say, Jesus rescued me. And so now my life is to rescue others and God help us that we don't have to die for our faith, but at all costs, at all costs, we lay our lives down to serve other people with gentleness and kindness and we're a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. This is Easter, happy Easter. Would you pray with me? God on Calvary, a specific location and a specific time in a specific moment, you bled on a cross and died. So we look to Calvary, to this location, to the cross, where you ransomed us. You paid, <coughs> you paid a price, God, that we couldn't pay. You died so that we could live. Great price. So we look to your cross, that all who look to the cross of Jesus Christ, who feel in control or out of control, who feel weary and heavy laden, can find rest at Calvary, at the cross. But also at the cross, we discover the rest and the recharge and the purpose to spend our lives serving other people. Help us to speak the truth in love, help us to be gentle and kind, I pray you'd raise the church of Jesus Christ up. Raise us up out of our seats to be gentle. Raise us up out of our seats to hate injustice. Raise us up out of our seats to be humble. Raise us up out of our seats to be kind. Raise us up out of our seats to be self-controlled, to be peaceable. Raise us up as a group of people to not be a problem but a solution in our workplaces, in our homes, in our communities. You can do this in us and through us. You did it through Jesus and you can do it again through us. Help us, in Jesus' name, amen. you crucified somehow in this room right now it is enough the weight of the world too much for the souls of men but somehow you hold it all upon the cross Scarlet flowing from your hands inside, covered into sin. 
stand with us. We're going to continue to celebrate the goodness of our God, his love for us. Lord, we are so grateful that you took care of us the way that you did. Thank you, Lord. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished.
It's been so wonderful to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus with all of you. Hey, if you're new, if this is your first time here, we would love to connect with you. We would hate for you to fall through the cracks and we don't get to know who you are, what your name is, and what your questions are. It's very easy to connect. Just text the word CONNECTIONS to 97000 and you can connect that way. And also, we want to thank you for your generosity. Your giving helps people find and follow Jesus. So all the ways of giving are available to you if that's what you want to do today. Listen, so much happened today. After hearing all of these songs and singing and listening to that message, maybe you've been thinking, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I am burdened. And this rest that we've been talking about today you're interested in it. And you don't understand everything and you don't even know what you believe about Jesus and you have all these questions. Let me challenge you, lean in to that doubt, lean in to those questions because I promise you, if you follow through, you will find rest at the end. Tell someone about it. Tell someone on staff, volunteers, we have prayer works right outside these doors. Tell someone if you're online, post in the chat that you have a question, you wanna know more. But maybe you've already experienced this rest, but you have people in your mind right now, family members, people at work that needs rescuing and you don't know what to do about that. Tell someone, we wanna help you through that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. We love you, we're praying for you. Have a great Easter. Hey, before you go, I know that a lot just happened, but before you log off, I just wanted to let you know that we're here for you. No matter what you're going through in life right now, you probably have a lot of questions. This is your first time, we're so glad that you're here, but you probably have some questions. I'm just letting you know that we're here for you to pray with you and try to answer any of your questions. You can go to our website, faithchurchpa.com slash connect online and you can connect directly to me and I will reply with a video if you need prayer if you have any questions you can connect to our Facebook group all of that you can find on the link on the screen just know that you're loved we're praying for you have a great week